so I decided to make a recipe video about Twilight. In preparation for this, I even read the book again for the first time since I was like 12 and I must admit I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I mean, the list of things that are not so great with Twilight, it's a pretty long one. But there is also some good stuff. For me, the series holds a lot of tween nostalgia so I might be biased, but I love the universe the author has created with Forks and all the characters. And the soundtrack is excellent. Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson I both love. And again, the, the soundtrack, stream it. Not only did I reread the book for this, I also did my fair share of internet research, digging through 10-year-old sites and videos. For example, on this Yahoo Answers from 2009, there's someone asking, what are all the types of food mentioned in the Twilight Saga? I'm throwing a Twilight party and everything needs to perfect. Please just list down all the foods you know, like Edward's omelets or Clearwater's fried fish. And you know they got a lot of helpful answers, like this one from Vance Mummy, or this one by Anonymous. I love the PS, I should be invited. The saga rocks, exclamation point, XP, exclamation point. But this user, Dandelion Puffs TM, also had some things to say. Wow, how obsessed can you get? I mean, what food they ate? God, get a life. Emily's Muffins, Jacob's Dad's Salmon in the first book. <laughs> For today's recipes, I focused on the first book and movie only because this video is gonna be long enough as it is. Also, if you're new here, I'm gonna be making everything vegan and therefore in most cases the foods are not gonna be exactly the same as they were intended to be in the source material. So Bella's supposed to be quite the cook, in fact. Something that doesn't come across in the movie at all. There's a couple scenes where Bella and Charlie eat at this random diner and that place just doesn't exist in the book. The two of them usually have dinner at home together. And the first meal Bella makes in the book is described as follows. When I got home, I unloaded all the groceries, stuffing them in wherever I could find an open space. I hope Charlie wouldn't mind. I wrapped potatoes in foil and stuck them in the oven to bake covered a steak in marinade, and balanced it on top of a carton of eggs in the fridge. I had decided to read Withering Heights, and that's what I was doing when Charlie came home. I'd lost track of the time, and I hurried downstairs to take the potatoes out and put the steak into broil. Okay, so you've probably guessed it by now. For this first recipe, we'll be making vegan steak and potatoes. Preheat your oven to 210 degrees Celsius. Line a baking sheet with either aluminum foil or parchment paper, or grate it thoroughly with some oil. Grab some potatoes, prick them with a fork, careful with your hands, place each one on a little piece of aluminum foil. Seeing this now again, I think I could have easily used less foil. Brush each potato with some olive oil and then add some salt or any other seasoning you like. I used fries seasoning. Wrap each potato tightly and place them all next to each other on the baking sheet, making sure to leave some space for the steaks as well. We're gonna give these potatoes a head start of 12 to 15 minutes. In the meantime, grab a medium-sized cauliflower. If needed, trim the bottom stem piece just so it's level. Remove really big leaves, but I suggest keeping the smaller ones because I find those help the steaks keep their shape more. This is optional, but I cut off the ends of two opposite sides so that the pieces would all be level. The raw cauliflower ends you can use in tons of other things like a side salad, which is what I'm gonna be doing. Slice the cauliflower lengthwise into four to five pieces. They should all be around three to four centimeters thick. Some may fall apart, but even then you can continue on with this recipe the exact same way. Brush the top of each steak with some oil and place them next to the potatoes on the baking sheet. I did it the other way around, which is probably like a less safe way to do this. Let this continue to roast for 20 to 25 minutes at 210 degrees Celsius. In the meantime, make your marinade. In a small saucepan, combine the cornstarch and water first. Add the finely chopped garlic, some liquid sweetener, I went for a date syrup here, balsamic vinegar, and miso paste. Bring the heat to medium high and let it cook while stirring thoroughly for 3 to 5 minutes. It's gonna thicken up pretty quickly, so add some more water to adjust the consistency if needed. Also season it with some salt and other spices and set it aside. Take out the baking sheet, spread the cauliflower with the marinade, 
continue to let everything roast for another 20 minutes, this time turn down the heat a bit to 190 degrees Celsius. It's mentioned in the book that Bella also makes a salad, and so I decided to make the one shown in the movie. Had a Ballard. And I got so excited about being able to actually replicate something accurately for once. It also doesn't seem like she puts anything on it, so it's more just like an array of carefully placed raw vegetables. Back to the other vegetables, I added some vegan butter here, and some parsley. I was so hungry for this. Bella has cereal for breakfast numerous times in the book. I was looking online to see if there was anything on which exact type of cereal she likes, but all I could find was this Tumblr mood board about Edward being disgusted by Bella eating cereal. I love the internet. I feel like a bowl of cornflakes is not that much of a recipe though, so I decided to go to the other extreme and make my own cereal from scratch. I went to Instagram for help and asked people what their favorite kind of cereal was, and two of the most suggested answers were Cinnaminis, or Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and Cocoa Pops. So for the second recipe, I'm gonna be fusing these two ideas. Here's how to make cinnamon pops from scratch. In a large bowl, combine all the dry ingredients. All-purpose flour, sugar, salt, cinnamon, and baking powder. Melt down some vegan butter for the wet ingredients. To the mixing bowl, you're gonna be adding some unsweetened applesauce. Pour in the butter and the non-dairy milk. Mix the ingredients with a spoon first, and then switch to your hands, kneading the dough for a minute or two, and then form it into this big ball. Wrap it up in some parchment paper and place it into the fridge for 20 to 30 minutes. Before you get started on shaping the cereal pieces, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Create little balls of cinnamon cereal. Place each one on a parchment lined baking sheet. You can actually fill three to four baking sheets with this recipe. So maybe only do half the ball first while you keep the rest in the fridge. I wouldn't call this a speedy breakfast per se, but you know you can put on the Twilight soundtrack and maybe get someone to help you and make make some cereal together. Now you got two options, either bake them for 15 to 16 minutes just like this, or if you want them to be even more indulgent and taste super close to real cinnamonies, brush them with a little bit of melted vegan butter and sprinkle them with cinnamon sugar. I mean, these are already essentially cookies that you're having for breakfast, so why not go all the way? Bake these also for 15 to 16 minutes. Let them cool fully before storing them in a big glass container, or serve them immediately with some vegan milk. These are so, so, so tasty. When Bella and Edward have dinner at that Italian place, Bella chooses the first thing she sees on the menu, which is mushroom ravioli. Like with the cereal, this recipe, it's an activity. Make them with a buddy or make them once for yourself and freeze the ones that you're not having on that, on that day, because um, that way you'll have something to look forward to in your freezer. To a big mixing bowl, add all-purpose flour. If you're in Germany, use the normal 405 wheat flour type. Then you're gonna add some wheat semolina. Now in Germany, this is pretty easy to find, baking aisle Erika, for example, um, but if you don't have access to that, just use more flour. Also add salt and mix it all together. Create this indentation in the flour mixture. That's where the wet ingredients are gonna go. So the olive oil and the water. Now push the flour mix toward the water and oil and um, combine it all with a spoon until the dough slowly starts to come together, then switch to your hands. On a lightly floured surface, knead this dough for 8 to 10 minutes. Then 
Then place it inside a bowl or wrap it up in some parchment paper or foil and place it into the fridge for 30 minutes. In the meantime, make your filling. First off, cut up a bunch of mushrooms. Cut them up as finely as you can. Also chop up two cloves of garlic and some parsley. By the way, I'm here removing the stems before chopping up the parsley. To a medium-sized skillet, add some vegan butter and olive oil and bring this up to medium heat. Once hot, add the mushrooms. Let those cook for around five minutes. Then add the garlic and the parsley and let everything continue to cook for another five to seven minutes. Season everything with some lemon zest, salt and pepper. Then add some vegan cream. Mix in that nutritional yeast and let it cook for another two minutes or so before adding two teaspoons of flour. Make sure to season this mixture very well because it's gonna be the thing you'll be tasting the most when biting into a ravioli. I also made some vegan parmesan by blending up roasted and salted cashews with a bit of nutritional yeast in a food processor for like 30 seconds to a minute. Cool, now roll out the dough. Roll it out on a floured surface using a rolling pin, as thinly as you possibly can without it breaking or sticking to the bottom, of course. So mine ended up being two to three millimeters in thickness. Then grab a glass jar or a cookie cutter of some sort and cut out little shapes. Grab a pasta circle. Add about a teaspoon of filling to the middle of that circle Place a second, somewhat equally sized circle on top of that and close it all using a fork like so. Poke tiny holes in there as well. Cute. I also made some square shaped ones. Keep filling your raviolis until you have made enough to fit inside your pot. I made like 10 for this first batch. Once the water is boiling, quickly add the raviolis and let them cook on a low simmer for three to five minutes or until they all float at the top. And now you're done with the first batch. I'll have some notes in the description regarding freezing these and how to make it a little bit easier. I served them with some garlic butter. So I just melted a tablespoon of vegan butter with a crushed clove of garlic. And then I also added some of that cashew cheese powder these are so nice. I'm not sure, but I think they would be even softer and more delicate if you'd make them with like a like a pasta machine. If you happen to have one of those lying around, use it to roll out the dough before cutting it. This is probably the fanciest thing I've made on here and also just in life. Um, but yeah, very, very yummy. Moving on to this last recipe, a much, much simpler one. Remember that scene at the diner cafe that I mentioned? There's this lady telling Bella that as a kid, she used to love berry cobbler. And that was enough for me to be like, oh yeah, I, I wanna make that. Cobbler seems to be a controversial dessert. There's some people who make it with a, with a crispy biscuit-like topping. And then there's others that have it with, with a soft pancake-esque base. And then there's probably more versions than that. I went for the latter just because I think I did a crumbly crisp thing fairly recently. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees and grease a small baking tin or a casserole dish with vegan butter. To a small saucepan, add some frozen raspberries, frozen blueberries, a couple tablespoons of sugar, a pinch of cinnamon, a squeeze of lemon juice, and a bit of cornstarch. Bring the heat up to medium high. Let it cook for just two to three minutes and mix it every once in a while. In a large mixing bowl, I really have to upgrade my baking bowl collection to at least two. <laughs> Combine the dry ingredients first. Flour, baking powder, salt, sugar. Then add some melted vegan butter, some unsweetened applesauce, some plant milk, and also some vanilla. Mix it all up. Pour the batter into the baking dish. Spoon the berry mix on top and kind of swirl it around a bit. The berry to batter ratio is almost 50-50. Bake this for 40 to 43 minutes. 
Let it cool a little bit before serving so you don't burn yourself. This dessert is so cozy. Have it with some vegan yogurt or ice cream or cream, whatever you like. And that, my friends, was my Twilight video. Thanks for watching until the end. I really appreciate it. This was the most fun. Let me know what other book or movie franchise you would like me to cover next. I have a few in mind, but I'm definitely open to suggestions. I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye. I've got you.